Today marks the beginning of what millions of Americans and all major corporations consider to be the single holiest month of the entire year. It is Pride Month, of course, and as you've probably noticed, the observances are well underway. Uh, maybe you've seen a bunch of pride flags everywhere. Maybe you've noticed all of the pride-themed advertisements. Maybe there's a pride parade marching down your street at this very moment full of naked people exposing themselves to children. If you're in San Francisco, that's a year-round activity, of course. Whatever the case, pride is here. And for decades, you know, it used to be that pride was just one day, sort of like a transgender day of remembrance or the intersex awareness day or pansexual pride day, international pronouns day. But now pride is four weeks long. Can't avoid it if you try. It's the literal celebration of one of the seven deadly sins, and it simply can't be ignored. It's all encompassing. So last year on June 1st, we decided to, um, you know, join in and mark the occasion my documentary, What is a Woman, premiered at The Daily Wire one year ago today to start off uh, Pride Month. It was a very deliberate choice by us to start the month uh, with this film. For the film, my team and I, as you know, traveled all over the world asking that simple question in the title. Just a few years ago and throughout all of human history before that, the question would not have stumped a single person. If we had made a film called What is a Woman in the year 2010 and gone around asking this question, everybody would be very confused, but confused for a different reason, confused about why we're asking such an obvious question to begin with. But we found that in 2022, it was a real mind twister. To be sure, some people you know, had no problem telling us what a woman is. The tribesmen we met in Kenya could answer the question easily, for example. So could the Vietnam veteran in Washington State who runs his own store selling Star Wars memorabilia. But we found that the kind of people who celebrate Pride Month the identity-obsessed members of Congress, the gender studies professors, the physicians who make a lot of money mutilating children and so on, they could not give us an answer. In fact, they couldn't give us anything resembling an answer. They couldn't get close to an answer. They just started dissembling, and in many cases, they ran away, or they screamed at us, or both. These are the activists, the medical experts, who will uh, tell you without hesitation that trans women are women. They'll have you fired from your job, ostracized for the rest of your life if you disagree with them. But they can't even define the word. What is a woman was an international success because most people recognize how absurd this is. I mean, don't we have free speech in this country? Isn't this what the country was founded on? Isn't it the basis for the First Amendment to our Constitution? What's the point of all that exactly if it can't protect us when we speak openly and honestly about whatever we want to talk about? And in particular, what's the point of all of that? If we can't even ask a question about the most fundamental and immutable aspect of our identity, something that's embedded at the chromosomal level, which is our sex, this is way beyond free speech. Okay, this is an attack not just on speech, but on the ability to speak basic fundamental truth. In a country where speaking the truth, not your truth, but the truth, has somehow become a revolutionary act, it makes sense that What is a Woman became a revolutionary film and one of the most influential and more t one of the most talked about documentaries of the century. We've screened the film all over the country. Every time we've gotten a massive response, we've shown it at colleges that don't allow dissent on this issue in the classroom. And since the release of the film, we've done even more to expose the damage that's being done by activists who deny the reality of biology, including at Vanderbilt Medical Center, where they abuse children for profit. Of course, we've seen laws being passed all across the country. And uh, the film, we're proud to say, was a catalyst for a lot of that, helped to be a catalyst for a lot of that. But the, the incredible positive response to the film was met with fury and rage on the other side. The film has been banned from major big tech platforms, denounced as hate speech, reviled by many of the worst people in our country. It also made me personally public enemy number one to many of these trans activists, a title that I am proud to still hold and one that I intend to keep for as long as I live. I am very much proud to be hated by these kinds of people. I don't mind the hatred. What I do mind is the censorship, the fear, the refusal to even engage. And that's why we've been excited to see the changes to Twitter this past year under new management. For the first time, the owner of a major social media platform didn't just promise to respect the freedom of speech of uh, all the users. He seemed to really mean it. Elon Musk lifted the previous regime's political bans on thousands of users, including the former president of the United States. Uh, Musk also, it seemed, eliminated, it seemed, eliminated Twitter's rules, which require that you respect the fake pronouns and gender identities of other users. 
And Musk promised transparency in Twitter's algorithm so that people with unfavorable opinions wouldn't be shadow banned anymore. They wouldn't be suppressed. And it was for all those reasons this year um, that we reached out to Twitter about distributing what is a woman on their platform for free, you know, for all users. This is how we plan to mark the one year anniversary of the film. And it's how we wanted to ring in Pride Month 2023. We wanted to take the movie that LGBT cultists hate the most and put it out in its entirety for free on one of the most trafficked social media platforms on the planet. And we wanted to do it on the first day of Pride Month. That was the plan. Now, as the Daily Wire CEO Jeremy Boring wrote earlier today, uh, Twitter was initially receptive to this idea. In fact, they were excited about it. They pledged to set up a, a custom landing page just for the film so that everybody could find it easily. This is something that we were happy to pay for. This is a privilege that we were going to pay Twitter for. Uh, Twitter signed an agreement to that effect. Then, after all that, they asked to review the film because they wanted to screen it for any content that might, quote, trigger users on its platform because they wanted to know, you know how they were going to respond if, uh, when, when, the, when the film uh, proved to be controversial. Now, that was a, a giant red flag, obviously, uh, since when do free speech platforms talk about trigger warnings to begin with? And indeed, after reviewing the film, uh, as you might have seen, Twitter suddenly changed its mind, switched course. Instead of promising to promote the film, Twitter informed us that they would dramatically restrict its reach. They labeled it as a hateful content, and they were going to make it as hard as possible to find without outright banning it. So all the shadow bans that we uh, heard about in the past under the old regime, and we were told the shadow bans were gone, we're now being told by Twitter that they will do that to this film when we post it, because it is hate speech, they said. They would ensure that it would not appear in people's feeds. Uh, the algorithm would crush it completely. We were told by Twitter that that is what they're going to do. Now, how could that be, we asked. What, what hateful content were they talking about exactly? But where's, what's the, the hateful part of the film? I mean, I made the movie. I'm in it. I don't remember any hateful content. Twitter directed us to two clips in particular from What is a Woman uh, that they said are hateful content. And because of these segments of the film, it becomes hate speech and they're going to restrict its reach on the platform. Now, I'm going to show you both of these clips because it's hard to believe that they're really saying It's hard to believe anyway if you took their new commitment to free speech seriously. If you took that seriously, then uh, this will be shocking to you. In the first clip, a father in Canada tells us that um, he was arrested and he was fined $30,000. His crime was referring to his 14-year-old daughter as a she. The father tried to prevent doctors from uh, pumping his daughter full of hormones and tried to protect his daughter from mutilation and, um, and, uh, and, and butchery, so the Canadian government destroyed his life. And now Twitter is calling this father hateful, and they're saying that you, you shouldn't hear what he has to say because of this clip, which we will play right now. Listen. Hello? Hey, is this This is, yes. Hey, it's, it's Matt Walsh. Are you, where are you right now? I'm, uh, I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada right now. Are you can Are you able to leave? I'm not able to leave BC. I can't even go to another province in Canada right now. Uh, and it's because I'm technically out on bail. What happened exactly? How exactly did, did this get into the courts to begin with? Right, so what happened is we set up a meeting with BC Children's Hospital. And according to the BC Children's Hospital website, there's gonna be a thorough evaluation and I'm thinking, good, this is gonna be the end of it all. They're gonna clearly see that my child is not the opposite sex. So my ex-wife brings my child into BC Children's Hospital. I get a call less than an hour into that appointment is that they were gonna pump her full of cross-sex hormones within the hour. And I put a halt to that, I said, no. They agreed to, to stop for the moment. They figured, well, let's get the dad on board too. This is all gonna be better. Let's just get everybody on the same page. I said, it's not gonna happen. So I get a letter from BC Children's Hospital in December of 2018. And it says that under the BC Infants Act, they will start injecting my child with cross-sex hormones. And I have two weeks to respond with legal action if I so choose. And so that's how I ended up in court because I did respond with legal action. 
So you called your daughter a she, and you you went to jail for that? It's considered criminal violence to uh, not use the preferred pronouns. It is no different than, let's say, I were to take a broomstick and whack one of my kids over the head. So they were treating it in a similar fashion that misgendering, mispronouning my child was the equivalent of family violence. Is she on the hormone pills now? She is. The court ordered that she could do whatever she wanted. Now, what happened to the the man in that clip is becoming common in Canada. Fathers are now often required in a supposedly free country to stay quiet as doctors castrate their children. And that's exactly what these off-label hormones do. They sterilize girls and women. Um, They cause all kinds of other problems, too, including early-onset osteoporosis. We spoke to one person in the documentary who experienced some truly horrible uh, symptoms, but according to, to the court system in Canada, fathers have no right to protect their daughters from any of that. They want to shut those parents up. And now, apparently, Twitter agrees with the courts in Canada. By the way, um, that father has a sentence, sentencing hearing this week and may be on his way back to jail. Back to jail in a case that began with him simply wanting to raise his daughter as his daughter and refer to her as such. Began with a father not wanting his daughter to be sterilized. It takes a special kind of company to want to partner with my show. I say a lot of things that make a lot of people angry, and this tends to scare off advertisers. That's uh, just part of the bargain. That's why I'm so grateful for partners like Pure Talk, who stand behind me and my show, no matter the consequences they might face. And that takes real courage on their part. It really does. Pure Talk shares my values, which is why we've made them the official cell phone wireless partner of The Daily Wire. That's not the only reason, though. Pure Talk offers the most dependable 5G network in the U.S., I use it myself. It's a great product. So you're not just buying it because you're supporting the cause. You're buying that, but also it's a great product and a great service. Their their plans are top tier, but at a fraction of the cost of AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile. You can get unlimited text, talk, and unlimited data with a mobile hotspot for just $55 a month. You vote with how you spend your money. So stop supporting woke wireless companies that don't support you. Instead, go to puretalk.com slash Walsh. You'll get great coverage and you'll save while you're doing it. When you go to puretalk.com slash Walsh, you'll save an additional 50% off your first month because they actually value you, if you can imagine that. That's puretalk.com slash Walsh. Pure Talk, wireless for Americans by Americans. So I want you to think about what Twitter is doing here. They're, They're not even accusing me of hate speech, right? They're actually accusing this father, a man who's already been arrested, tried, jailed, had his life destroyed. They're accusing him of committing hate speech against his own daughter, simply because he acknowledges that she is a girl. Now, that was one clip. There's another clip that Twitter objected to as well. Uh, This clip features the aforementioned shop owner, Vietnam War veteran, who used biologically accurate pronouns in response to a trans activist who was accosting him in his store And here's what that hateful content looks like. How long have you been uh, running the shop here? 25 years. Wow. Now, you had an incident here a little while ago that went really viral online. Uh, Lots of reaction in the public. Aberdeen Councilwoman Tiesa Meskis confronted owner Don Sucre about a sign he posted in his store. One day I just put the sign up over here and uh, he came around the corner and I thought, okay, I recognize him. I says, uh, oh, I recognize you, you're our new city councilman. He says, no, I'm your new city councilwoman. So it was, it was kind of on from there. You know what, it's <laughs> No, what you're spouting is <laughs> No, it's not. Trans it is- women are women, sir. That sign is I've been doing this 25 years. I've never had a problem with anybody, whether they're gay, transsexual, anything. Now, you're saying councilman, he, this individual was saying, I'm a woman. Right. And and you said you're not a woman. How how, how do you know that that person's not a woman? How do I know? Yeah. Well, uh, common sense. Trans women are women! Doesn't, Doesn't the science say that if someone identifies as a woman, then they are. No, no. Now that's completely bogus. I don't care if you think you're a sheepdog and you come into my store, it don't matter to me. Just don't come in and try to shove that down my throat. If it makes someone feel better, 
What about their, their feelings? I, mean, I don't give a shit about their feelings. I'm old. What about the Star Wars universe? Jar Jar Binks, pansexual, do you think? Transgender? Um, why, would I, why would I even care? It's, if it's his truth. Well, it ain't true. You're not a scientist. You're not a gender studies major. Or are you? No. no? Okay. How do you know that you're a man? How do I know that I'm a I guess because I got it. Well, I guess Don isn't overthinking it. He admits he's not a gender studies major, or at the very least, a doctor. Now, not that this really matters, but how many Americans in this country do you think agree with that store owner? If you ran a poll and said, can men transform into women in an instant, what results do you think you'd get? Now, I asked a poll that says, can men become women? That's the question. Not a poll that asks, do you believe in gender-affirming care? When most people have no idea what that means. If you phrase it simply to people so they understand the question, well, what kind of results do you think you get? Of course, most people would agree with the store owner. The only difference is that most Americans are too afraid to be honest about it because of exactly what happened to that store owner. The store owner was not honest, was, was, was not afraid to be honest. So a mob of activists tried to ruin his life. And now Twitter is once again trying to silence him. And I have to continue to emphasize what makes this so egregious is that it's not simply speech. Okay. It's not that the Star Wars shop owner, Don Suker, it's not that they were, that he was just giving his opinion about something. This is not his opinion. It's bad enough to silence people who are giving their opinions. We, we should have a society and we should have Big tech platforms where you can have an opinion, you can have any opinion about anything, and you can voice that opinion. If other people don't like it, they can voice their opinions, and then you have, a, you have a debate about it. That's the way it's supposed to work in a free society. But my point is that this is not his opinion. This is just the truth. And so, yes, they're suppressing free speech, but more importantly, they are suppressing the truth. Now, we reached out to Twitter about their objection to these clips. We've had, uh, we've had, had extensive conversations with them, in fact behind the scenes about this. Um, so that's the other thing you need to know is that for, on Twitter's end, this is not some algorithmic glitch, okay? This is a very intentional decision on their part. When they told us that they're going to suppress it and label it hate speech, this was a decision that was made. We know that because we talked to them. And when we talked to them, they said um, that, it's, uh, that it that it's violates their misgendering policy. Now, we asked them, didn't Twitter remove its misgendering policy? Because it was a misnomer. You know, misgendering just means you're correctly gendering someone. Didn't they allow Twitter users to once again refer to others with accurate pronouns instead of inaccurate ones? They did take that language off of their policy. That happened recently. But Twitter told us that actually misgendering is still considered abuse and harassment on the platform. Uh, and they just, they just don't specify it anymore. So they asked us to edit our film to comply with this new rule, this new unspoken rule against using accurate pronouns. And of course, uh, we refused. We're not going to do that. I mean, obviously, we're not going to do that. Which means that The Daily Wire is still going to distribute What is a Woman tonight, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to make it available on Twitter for everyone to see for free. It's going to stream tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. It'll be available thereafter for 24 hours. Whether Twitter, Twitter will let you see it or not, that's what remains unclear. You know, whether they actually tag it with the hate speech label and suppress it, that's the part that we're going to find out. This is a documentary that more than a year after its release is still being suppressed. I mean, think about that. A year later, and they are still suppressing it. They are still terrified of this movie. They do not want you to see it. The reason for that is obvious. They know that it's effective. They know that they can't answer even the most basic questions about their ideology. And that's the reason that sane people uh, aren't calling for, you know, bans on trans activists, by the way. We're, we, we're not returning the favor. When Elon Musk took over Twitter, we weren't saying ban all the trans activists. We aren't, we're not trying to kick them off of the platforms and silence them. On the contrary, we want to debate them. We, we want them to speak. We want them to be able to speak. We want, we want us to be able to speak. We want you to hear the contrast. In fact, that's one of the great ironies of this whole thing. Twitter's attempt to suppress us, all the other censorship that we faced. What makes it so ironic is that for most of the film, we allow the trans activist side to speak. They're constantly complaining, let us speak, let our voices be heard. 
And this movie is us saying, okay, here you go. Hey, the stage is yours. Let's hear your side. Most of the movie consists of them speaking. We give them the floor. We give them the the camera and the microphone because we want people to hear them. We want their ideology to be fully exposed. And if that ideology is going to hang, we want it to hang itself. And we want you to see it hanging itself. And it did. And that's the main reason why they hate this movie so much. Because we didn't go around arguing with them and yelling at them. We just asked them questions and said, here you go. Tell us all, tell us all about your, your position. And they humiliated themselves. All the supposed experts, the doctors, all these people that were told, trust the experts. Well, we went to the experts. We put cameras in front of their faces. And we said, okay, experts, give us your spiel. And they came off like idiots and maniacs. That's not our fault. That's on them. If Twitter's ever going to be a free speech platform, which Elon Musk says he badly wants it to be, then um, these people cannot be allowed to suppress speech. Twitter likes to throw out the freedom of speech is not freedom of reach argument, but that's a cowardly dodge. It's no different than Idi Amin's famous quote, there's freedom of speech, he said, but I can't guarantee freedom after speech. Now, there's still time for Twitter to reverse its decision. If it wants to be a free speech platform, it must reverse this decision. This is a time for choosing. Twitter has to pick a side. Everyone has to pick a side. Either you are fully on the side of sanity and freedom and common sense, or you are against it. You got to choose. It it is one or the other. There's no middle ground. One or the other. It's always been that way. Now, as for us, in the meantime, no matter what happens, we are not going to self-censor. And we are definitely not going to bow to the censors in Silicon Valley. We, we hope you'll watch the film tonight at 8 p.m. Introduce it to as many people as you can. Watch it, share it, make sure people see it. And we hope you'll continue to check uh, The Daily Wire and its Twitter feeds and everything we're doing throughout Pride Month because we have a lot planned. Um, and if Twitter's actions this week tell us anything, it's that this fight is, if anything, even more important today than it was a year ago. It also shows that we are winning. We are winning. And they are scared. And that's why they try to silence us. But we will not be silenced, no matter what. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.